and welcome back to Asian Pulse. I'm your host, Shivangni Niker, and thank you for tuning into Asian Pulse Television, your information and educational channel. Vancouver saw a much greater amount of wet weather in the summer of 2020. That is why the forest fires in the interior are out of control. It's mostly felt in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and other provinces in the east. One lockup after another, staying indoors due to poor air quality, and 57% 50, of ER patients are from heat exposure and especially who, those that have asthma and bronchitis. Drink plenty of water and stay indoors as much as you can. We are lucky that our air quality is clear. We are not out in the woods. Our infection rates in BC is increasing. Now, people who are infected are the ones who are getting, the ones who are refusing to get their vaccination. So vaccinations is free, so get yours now. I'll be right back after these words from our sponsors. Buying or selling a house is a difficult process. Get Brem Prakash from Saba Realty Limited to find you your dream home, whether it's your first house, upgrading, or investment property. Always at your service with a fast, friendly, and honest opinion. Brem Prakash will guide you through the entire process. Get in touch with him today for a free, no-obligation consultation at 778-840-5866. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. Community Outreach Pharmacy, providing in-home pharmacy services. This includes our specialized diabetes and blood pressure monitoring program. Free blister packing, free deliveries, and an in-home injection service throughout the whole Lower Mainland. Call us at 604-777-5601 for more information. We have invited Haroon Khan, Pres President Pakistan Can Canada Association. He is in our studio to talk about Islamophobia and why Muslims fear for their safety. So have a look. In our studios, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Haroon Khan. Haroon has been a figure in the community for many, many years. And how he started that, his dad was also very proactive in the Pakistani community. And he was the one that started the first mosque in Vancouver. And Haroon is the past president of Pakistan Muslim Association. Uh, Pakistan Canada Association. Pakistan Canada yeah. Association here. Uh, so we are here today to talk about what is happening in the Muslim community. So welcome. Thank you, Camila. It's a pleasure to be here. It's uh, always great to see you. So before we start, we have a lot of time to talk about this. Yes. Can you introduce yourself? Talk about the organizations you have been involved and uh, the things that you have started, all everything about you. Sure. Um, well, I'm a trustee of the Al Jamia Masjid Mount Cooper, as you had said. It's the first mosque established in 1963 uh, by my father and a number of pioneers, one of whom we lost recently, uh, MZ Khan, and uh, many others from various backgrounds that made it a reality. Uh, the Pakistan Canada Association is the first community based organization of its kind. Uh, we'll be close to 60 years worth of, uh, uh, of uh, service to the community there. Uh, I grew up in it. Uh, uh, my father really uh, blazed the trail, uh, not just for the Pakistani and Muslim community, but also uh, working very, very diligently and very hard for multiculturalism. Mm. So, uh, so he served with the affiliation of multicultural societies and service agencies, the BMS, and many, many other places. So, uh, so his uh, pioneering work was very um, important. Uh, for, for all communities and for me as his son, uh, it's my way of keeping up that work. Uh, uh, you know, he, he passed away very suddenly and uh, uh, it was a very difficult time, but one of the ways of coping with it was to do the work. And mm -hmm. the work um, in and of itself, um, it can be very challenging, but it's also very rewarding. Very empowering too. Yes. yes. Because you are carrying his torch now to be able to move forward. And because, like you said, it's a healing too, yeah. that he, the work that he has started, all of a sudden it came to a halt because he passed away 
And I remember when your dad died. I remember yeah. very well. I went to your house yes. to pay my tribute or my respect yeah. Yeah. to your family. And at Thank that you. time I was Thank very, you. very new. And you guys were very young. So when were you born in here? Or I was. I was born. Uh, my father uh, was also pioneer in uh, in uh, in corrections. So he yes. was a probation officer, uh, first uh, of our community, uh, to, and he opened up the Peace River area. Mm -hmm. So uh, we settled in a town called Fort Saint John. So very way up there, way up, way up very north. Cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I was a Canadian kid through and through, and yeah. uh, we, we grew up in, in our early years in really small town, uh, British Columbia. Uh, then we we settled mostly in Vancouver uh, in, um, early on as well, uh, but we did spend time uh, in in Pakistan, and I've gone there many times since. I got married there, and I have uh, four kids now. Uh -huh, so. Uh -huh. Uh, so you know, it's just the life. Uh, life carries on, and you, you, you keep doing it. And uh, um, you know, we thank God for all the friends that we have, the family, the the, the uh, people in our community. And uh, because we've been doing the work with the multicultural communities, uh -huh. that's always been very good too. That we have very strong bonds. Uh, with people in the Christian community, the Jewish community, our Sikh community, Hindu community, but Buddhist, you name it, we don't, mm -hmm. and they know us. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so we all um, know each other, we understand each other, we have trust with one another. So uh, that bridge building, uh, it's been going on in earnest for many decades, and we'll continue to do that work. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just have to stay with it. So let's talk a little bit about racism. When you're growing up as a kid from Pakistani background, Pakistani parents, and uh, going to school. Did you face racism in those days? We sure did. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Um, no question about it. We faced racism. We had, uh, there were taunts, there were other things. But at the same time, because we were born here, we also were like, what, us? <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So, so that, that, was, that was something that, uh, yeah. that, that, even to this day, it's still, um, you know, it, it's surprising, uh, but it's very disappointing, mm -hmm. and it does make you angry. But you do have to do your your, your bit to, to combat it. Uh, I, you know, I remember when we were kids. You know, like uh, there were sick boys with their bugs, yeah. and they, you know, they'd be uh, bullied, and their bugs would be torn off. We we'd fight, and we we would uh, d defend them, mm -hmm. and these things would happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, you look at uh, today the manifestations of racism. They happen predominantly to people who are very visible in their faith. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for us, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy, I'm a big guy, and normally people mm. don't bother me. It's mm. a, it's always a, a good interaction uh, with most people. Not always, but mostly. But the real challenge is with uh, with women, with mm. women um, who wear hijab. Hijabs, you know, yeah. And who even looks a little traditional. And apne kudia dantia, they they yeah. wear the. Uh, the Dupatta or Chinni yeah, or, yeah, or what yeah. have you. Uh, so th these are the, the visible things, and that's very concerning. There have been attacks on, on, on women who are dressed in hijab yeah, or modestly. Yeah. And the sky and trains and everywhere. Sky trains yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, in Vancouver, Surrey. Uh, mm -hmm. So all this invective is there. But then it gets even worse. You know, a mother and daughter were attacked at knife point. Yeah. There was a Muslim man who had a, a big beard, yeah, yeah. big beard, and they cut his beard. And uh, so I, it's uh, th this kind of thing is um, it creates a, a certain level of anger. There is some fear. Uh, there is uh, mm -hmm. a real sense of concern. So uh, so there have been a, a great outpouring of support from the various communities. Mm -hmm. But the underlying uh, hatred is there. It's not an anomaly. It's actually um, been in Canada and in, in countries around the world for many centuries. And this is the settler colonialism mentality. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it goes to uh, goes hand in hand with white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I get along with white folks very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, but because they're, they're you don't have no accent, you can speak English very sure, well. You sure. are not an immigrant. Yeah. Yeah. Even your dad was an immigrant, but yeah. he came. And you went to school in he's, 1970s he's then, yeah, yeah, exactly. when you started elementary school and That's things right. like that. Yeah. You know, when I first came, I came to this country, I came in 1990s, yeah. early 1990s, 
And then when I will work on commercial drive, because yes, there was yeah. only one grocery store, Indian yeah. grocery store, yeah. that everybody used to go. I and remember. there was only one theater yeah. on commercial drive that people used to go and yeah. watch yeah. the movies and yes, all that. That's right. And then yeah. people will say, go back home, Paki. I, I look around myself. I say, who are they talking about? That's right. I'm yeah. not Paki, first of all. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what Paki meant. <laughs> well, Honest to God, I didn't know what that meant. Uh, sure, and later uh, sure. on, they think, and I said, are they thinking I'm from Pakistan? Uh, then I found out, no. They are people that wear turbans. Of, of, uh, I don't, uh, uh, I, I even to this day, I don't know why they were saying. Uh, but sure. later on in life, I mean, for myself, Maybe they don't say anything on my face. Maybe they talk behind my back. If I don't hear, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. But I always stand up for if I hear something. Exactly. And, and I think that's what we need to do. So let's go back from there. Moving forward, I want you to talk about, like we are talking about 1960s and 70s when we were in school and how very few of us we're yes. visible minority in That's those right. days, yeah. and we stand out any crowd yeah. because we are black, brown, or whatever. Sure. Sure. We were not yeah. fitting. But we have to remember this country is built on immigrants. This country is a diverse country. People from all over the world are here. That's, I mean, thanks to the First Nations people that allowed us to be on their land. Yeah, well, well right? you, 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 you hit the nail on the head. You have the indigenous people, and look at the discoveries they've made at these residential schools. So you've seen right from the beginning of, of Canada, it was a settler colonial uh, project. And so th they came in, and they pushed them out, and they were relegated to very um, uh, t tough situation. And uh, it's only been in these last 50 years that the, that the real building blocks of their nationhood, the, the, the recognition of, of the territories in which we live in. These mm -hmm. are indigenous lands, and we're, we're, we're their guests, really. And, uh, and we appreciate them. There's a, there's a greater appreciation. But there's also a horror and a sadness uh, that has happened uh, because of uh, the, these discoveries. And they've known about it for a long time, but now that the reality is, is that it's being uncovered, it, it opens up a zakam, like a wound. Uh, yeah, yeah, the zakam the yeah. is there, and so that happens. But, and, you know, I, I was, we had uh, at our mosque, we had uh, Inspector Terry Young of the, uh, of the Vancouver Police, Police Department. Department. Yeah. He's a South Asian fellow, and, uh, um, and he's Chinese. And, uh, and so he goes, well, you know, I walk out, and I'm in uniform, and people hate me because I'm a policeman. And then I take off my, my, my uniform, uniform and they hate me because I'm Chinese. <laughs> and so, you know, so what are you going to do? And so, so, so there's hatred. And so when, when you see uh, people in Chinatown, uh, the elderly uh, uh, in particular, they're targeted by these, these racist bullies and they're beaten. You know, uh, just for being Chinese, and and so so that's so that's a horrible thing. Um, you know, we had uh, Constable Darren uh, Ramdor, who is also there as well, and he's Indian, but he 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 sees it, and I think everybody. Uh, in all levels of government, in NGOs, in charities, and, and the work that we do, mm -hmm. it's come together in such a way that we all have to um, not only just stand shoulder to shoulder, but hold each other's hand, and, yes. uh, and, yes. and, and you know, not just stand with it, for, with each other, but stand up for each other. Because yes. if, if there's an attack on, on one group, it's an attack you on everybody. You can't be quiet. No. Because once they're coming after you, then if I just sit on the sideline and say, okay, yeah. I'm not part of it, it's happening to him, but let your, me figure it out. your day will out. come. <laughs> and the next time yeah. they will come That's after right. me, That's and the right. third yeah. time they're going to come. Yeah. Then there will be no one to support you. So I think w attack from one community or one community, I think we as a community, as people, should come together to be able to support that that I am with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so and solidarity. This is, and the solidarity is important. It's and important. that is what we should be doing with our First Nations brothers and sisters. Absolutely. History Absolutely. is repeating itself. Sure. Maybe so many of us didn't know what happened to the First Nations, yeah. how they were pushed back in the, you know, I mean, where are villages and things like that. Yeah. And how their children were stolen from them and genocide by so-called Sure. under the name of education, right? Yeah, well, so, 
Yeah. So now it's all coming up. What are we doing? We are staying silent. And that's the be worst thing we can do sure. for any community or any group of people. Yeah, and it's also looking for somebody to blame. So with the indigenous people, yeah, they were treated horribly not only by government, but by law enforcement, by all these agencies, yeah. and the church, the Catholic church at that time that ran those schools. And uh, But now there's been an, an uptick in burnings of churches. There was just last week a church yeah. in Syria was burnt to the ground. And we have to stand and, and so w with those churches as well because those are places of worship. Those are places of God. And no matter what happened in the past through them, they're still important uh, places for people to, to, to have some mm -hmm. spiritual place to go. And there are a lot of First Nations people that hold tight to that faith. Mm -hmm. as well as their indigenous mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so for people to think that they're doing something good for the native people by burning churches down, it's wrong. Right. And and most of the people that I've spoken to, uh, uh, they, they would agree with that assessment. So, you know, as much as you think, oh, I'm an ally, let's go burn these places down, it, you're doing a disservice to all the people that have died. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you, know, you can g t take really aim at any group and uh, every group is hard done by in one one way shape or form but i always like to think that look we're you know you're all in the quran it says you, you were brought into this world in nations and tribes different colors different different faiths different looks different languages and not to hate each other uh -huh. not to fear each other not to mistrust each other but to know each other just get to know somebody once you get to know them you know, like you have an understanding. You may not I entirely like them, but just, you know, say, well, see you later. But for, for others, you embrace, you come together. Well, your diversity is the strength. Uh -huh. And that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that, that really, at a very early age, I got it. And uh, I understand it. And I live it. You know, I take my own kids. I, uh, you know, our community uh, keeps doing this work. And so we feel that if we continue doing that, a lie with people uh, that feel the same way, uh, come and talk to people like you on mm -hmm. these shows, talk to your audience and say, hey, look, we're all together. Mm -hmm. We're in this thing together. And, and that's an important thing to communicate, that uh, uh, we are a human family. And uh, what good are we if, uh, if when we hear something wrong going on, if we're silent, you know, we're complicit. And uh, and that's something that uh, you, you your life is is more than uh, just being comfortable in your home. You know when things happen to uh, to people, uh, it's not just thinking silently to yourself. Oh, it's it's terrible. Do something. Say something. Uh, you know, talk to the people that that are in uh -huh. positions of power. Talk amongst yourselves and and come together. And we've seen it. Yeah. Like this summer uh, has been amazing. You see, we uh, many communities uh, came uh, together. Black have Lives come Matters together. and all that. Exactly, yeah. they come so together. So we are all together. So Another thing I was going to ask yeah. you too, and we were going to talk about Islamophobia. Yeah. But uh, we will talk about that a little bit later. Sure. No one is born racist. No. A child when he's born is doesn't know, and we don't even have a choice which who we want to pick as our parents, but every child is innocent. Yes, so when we yes. talk about racism or these people targeting certain group of people very young age from the schools and all, all that, where do you think this kind of behavior stay, uh, it's starts? Taught. It's taught. It's taught. And, and uh, taught by whom? By, well, the, well, by the, the parents the, or their in, caregivers? In, in some cases, it's, a, it's, the, it's the parents, it's the communities, it's the friends. And then there are a lot of people, especially when they're young, they're lonely. They, ha they don't belong anywhere. And so they become particularly vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so these days, I mean, if you see your, your kids or grandkids and you see the, they're all on their phones. I mean, I mean, I'm on my phone quite Do a lot. I think, yeah, I, I yeah. think all of us are. Yeah. But the kids, they were born with the, with the phones. They were born with the computers. And they were born with these social networks. And so these social networks, if you get involved in something that's of interest to you, there's something that can warp you if you're not careful. And, uh, and so you get involved. And so with social media online, uh, there are uh, uh, internet groups out there that prey upon uh, 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 people that are ignorant. Yeah. And these young white kids, they get, uh, they get ensnared by, uh, by these, uh, th these propaganda 
Thai forums and uh, uh, so if we dialogues talk. that's happening on social yeah. media because I am not part of any group I'm an adult yeah. so I just choose to be in certain social social groups so sure yeah, yeah. Well, and well, see, we're face yeah. we're face to face so yeah. we're talking yeah, we're engaging yeah. with each other head on and that's a that's an amazing thing and we but started this thing in last 15 to 20 years yeah. right yeah. that we all are working with cell phones so yeah. maybe if that is the issue then our children are get into that maybe it's also the responsibility of the parents if you we as a parent is on the phone or social media night and day the minute you come home you're cooking you're still looking at that yeah. listening to something True. then you put the phone away yeah. and that's the only way you can teach your children that while I'm home we're gonna have one-to-one -one conversation with no TV and no phones yeah. I mean, make some kind of arrangement at home. Sure. Yeah, well, well, there's that. But the other thing as well is to engage with people that are not just like you. This is the other thing, too. So we talked about Black Lives Matter, the indigenous uh, things, the Islamophobia things that have happened, other uh, other areas where where people felt compelled to come. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, so when there was an attack on a mosque in, in Montreal mm -hmm. or in Christchurch or this thing that and happened in, in London, London, Ontario, yeah. uh, people felt compelled to come, and so people came by by the, by the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands, and so uh, because people feel that those are huge community building uh, opportunities for people to come and say, hey, you know what, the, this the, the, this thing happened, but it didn't happen in my name. Mm -hmm. It didn't, like, I don't believe in this. And so uh, so people do come together. And they also come together on social media, too. Mm -hmm. Like, social media ha certainly has its merits. It's an incredible thing for crowdsourcing, for mm -hmm. crowdfunding, and yeah. for uh, bringing people together. Mm -hmm. And the more people that can come and look and see and hear the, whatever message you, you have, and you can come across... Um, it, it's certainly valuable, but the flip side of it is, is that for, the, for other people that don't have that, that base, that, that, that foundation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they can be pushed and pulled, right? Mm -hmm. Like they can be pulled into different directions. And, uh, and so the, just like, a, like a, a car, you know, you can use that car to move. It's a vehicle. But a vehicle used it in an improper way, like it happened in London, the guy used it as a weapon, yeah. just like a gun. Yes. He used to his kill, truck. Yeah, and he used his, his truck, and he took out the yeah. uh, whole family, four yeah. kids, uh, for four you know, uh, grandmother, f mother, father, and a daughter, and, and the boy was the only survivor. And they were, you know, just like with an intent to kill him, and they killed him. And uh, that that young man that that that, uh, that that killed him, and he did it on purpose. And, uh, and, and when he they was, what, 21 years old? 21 years, years old, old, and again, foot, bot, with body armor, and when he took the body armor off, he had swastika t-shirts and stuff like that. So somebody got to him, and uh, you think to it, it uh, again, it doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. but it, the, these people did not act alone. Mm -hmm. Right, like uh, in uh, in Europe, uh, some years back, there was a lone gunman, and he was again fitted and kitted, suited and booted in armor, and uh, you know automatic weapons, and just killing people. These people don't operate in a vacuum. I don't believe in in like a lone wolf mm -hmm. type character. They're like uh, you know there are real mm -hmm. uh, conspiracies, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a plotting. Uh, in Alberta right now, the sheer volume mm -hmm. of attacks that are happening against Muslims, against the women, against the seniors, against the people that are visible, mm -hmm. visibly Muslim, is staggering. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like and stuff that's reported in the news and stuff that's not reported in the yeah. news. Yeah, the some... volume is very large, and mm -hmm. so so, so uh, when you see that happening, uh, it's frightening. Um, I mean, here in Surrey, uh, you in the Gurdwara, the you uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, Sir Darji was yeah, uh, Singh. yeah, normal saying, yeah, normal yeah. saying, you know, so so he was beaten and killed and, because uh, of who he was, he was of a who Sikh. he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. so so uh, so it it happens and it happens uh, all too, too often. often, too often, so and the target right now, the target is towards the Muslim community, it is, it you is. know, yeah, yeah. so uh, after all these things happened, there was a big summit happened, yes, uh, yeah, that's let's talk a little bit about that. What was the outcome of that summit? And also that I would, I also came to realize that in all the G5 countries, G5 is all these very yeah. progressive, wealthy yeah. countries. Thank you, Mr. Haroon Khan, for your insight and why our community should 
to come together and support the Muslim community and our allies to our Muslim brothers and sisters. The Youth Summer Program of 2021 has an exclusive six-week de dedicated program for our children on summer break. This is on July 5th to August 13th, Monday to Thursday from 11 to 2 p.m. Register at www.ihsan.ca. Fiji's 50th Independence Day is taking place on October 9th, 2021. Get ready to come and celebrate with us. For boots and more information, please call 604-567 Four five six nine or six zero four five three seven five one two three. The Richmond Night Market is one of the biggest night markets in the north, and it's open every day from seven to midnight. This opens on July twenty third until September six. For tickets, you can email at admin at targetevent.com. If you have any events and planning to share it with us or would like to promote it, please send it at asianpulse at gmail.com. Don't forget to watch the Camilla Sling Show on Sundays at 5.30 and Mondays at 10 a.m. Fiji and Focus on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. and again on Sundays at 4 p.m. Viti Vibes on Thursdays at 10 p.m. and again on Sundays at 4.30. All our shows are aired in Alberta and BC times. Keep watch of these shows and please give us your feedback. We have run out of time as I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did bringing it to you. If you have any comments, suggestions, please contact us at AsianPulse at gmail.com. If you would like to be a supporter of our show and become a sponsor or to promote your business, please let us know as well. Before I leave, I leave you with these thoughts. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. By Martha Luther King Jr. If you missed out Asian Pulse today, you can catch it again on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 5.30. And Tuesdays at 3.30 a.m. Our show will be uploaded on our YouTube at Asian Pulse TV. I'm your host, Shivani Niker, signing off. See you all next week. Stay cool, stay hydrated, and keep your eye on your seniors in your circle. Bye for now.